Hello and welcome to all our viewers to our favorite cricket news bulletin 7 at 7 only on Stumps and Bales. This is your host Himani. Today we will be looking at top 7 headlines that are making some buzz in the game of cricket. In this show we will be looking at updates on Australia's tour to Sri Lanka, India women and their first series after World Cup, ICC media rights and much more. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. For the first news, we have an exciting and massive turnaround that happened yesterday where Sri Lanka beat Australia in the 4th ODI to win the home series against Aussies after 30 years. Batting first, Sri Lanka had put up a good score of 258 runs. Charit Asilanka played a beautiful knock to score 110 runs along with Dhananjay De Silva 60 that made their team reach a good score. Chasing the total, Australia lost its captain opener early in the innings and even though David Warner kept scoring from one side, he did not have any partner on the other end to score runs with. Wicket fell on regular intervals and Warner lost his patience. He got out on 99. The team got all out with four runs short of the target, losing the match and the series. Next up, we have a concerning news as no broadcaster has picked up rights to stream the matches to be played between India women and Sri Lanka women, either on television or on digital platforms. The Sri Lanka cricket CEO Ashley De Silva confirmed that the series rights have not been purchased by any broadcaster and the management intends to stream the matches live on their official YouTube account. This is the first time the Indian women cricketers are playing away from the country since their unfortunate elimination from ODI World Cup. Furthermore, this is their first overseas assignment since cricket star Mithali Raj retired. It is probably not just broadcasters' ignorance but us fans' duty to treat men's and women's game equally and take more interest in it. At number 3, there is an update regarding England team. All is not well in England's test camp as there are series of illnesses. Ben Stokes, the captain of side, fell sick and missed practice session on Tuesday. It is good news that his COVID test returned negative, which opens a possibility of him playing the third test against New Zealand. On the same line, batting coach of the team, Marcus Treskothik, has tested positive for COVID and is in quarantine. There are also some concerns about the lead bowler James Anderson's fitness. It is being floated around that the pacer is suffering an ankle injury. We hope that players get well soon and we see an another power pack test where the team will meet New Zealand for the third and final test of the series on 26th of June. Keeping the hopes alive is also our bowling legend R. Ashwin. It has been reported that the ace Indian spinner who missed the flight owing to a positive COVID-19 result will join the squad on June 24th in Leicester. He is scheduled to depart on June 23rd or 24th. Since June 24th marks the starting of the warm-up match against Leicester Shire, he is bound to miss it. Earlier, Jayant Yadav was kept on standby to replace Ashwin and was sent to NCA in Bengaluru. It looks like India will finally play with their full potential team in lone test that starts on July 1. For the next news, we have a kind gesture from Mumbai Cricket Association. The NCA has decided to award 1 lakh to 48 groundsmen each for their contribution during the IPL 2022. The plan is expected to be approved at the MCA's Apex Council meeting. As is true, Mumbai Cricket Association believes that the groundsmen deserve a special prize for their hard work during the summer. To prepare the practice and match pitches, several groundkeepers worked midnight hours. Earlier, BCCI Secretary Chair Shah had announced a reward of 1.25 crore to all the curators of ground used for IPL 2022. At number 6, let's put limelight on Indian domestic circuit in which prime tournament Ranji Trophy is hosting its finale. In the tournament decider match, Mumbai are chasing their 42nd trophy while Madhya Pradesh are hoping to win their first tournament as a state team. After winning the toss, Mumbai has decided to bat first and the scenes were similar to what we saw in the earlier match. The batters looked on swing and Prithvi Shaw and Yashasvi Jaiswal gave a good start to the team. Mumbai looks onto a big total in the first innings and Madhya Pradesh must do a lot of hard work to contain them. Last but not the least, we have ICC clarifying about media rights confusion. Recently, the Boards of Control for Cricket in India used an e-auction to sell media rights of IPL and it was widely praised for its openness. However, ICC has stated that the complexity of its media rights procurement does not permit the e-auction. It has also been said that the location for international women's tournament would be released in a month. 
On Monday, June 20th, the ICC opened its tender for its right for Indian territory alone for four and eight years, starting from 2024 to 31. The package requires broadcasters to submit claims for a linear and digital rights for four and eight years, and it most importantly includes a provision for a composite, something that BCCI had avoided. Additionally, for a period of four years, the ICC is soliciting separate bids for women's rights. Aren't we happy that Ashwin is joining the test squad soon or are we concerned about where we will get India vs Sri Lanka women's ODI score updates? That's all for today's news. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel Stumps and Bales. If you want to learn more about the topics, visit our website stumpsandbales.com. Also, please follow us on our social media accounts mentioned in the description down below. That's all from our side. Thank you and have a nice day.